Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I have teamed up with Progressive and we're going to be talking about five signs that you shouldn't buy a used vehicle. Now this video is designed with the average car buyer in mind, so if you're more mechanically inclined and you want to take on an older project car that has its flaws that you're going to fix up, more power to you. Uh, but if you're the average car shopper and you're looking to avoid some headaches, here's five signs that you maybe should stay away from a certain used vehicle. Now the first sign we're going to be talking about is a smoky exhaust. There's actually quite a bit you can learn about an engine based on the exhaust if it smokes and what color it is if there is smoke. And this isn't talking about steam, so if it's cold outside and you've just started up the car, the car isn't warmed up yet and you see, you know, steam coming from the tailpipe, that's normal, that's nothing to worry about. Uh, but if you do start to see smoke, uh, especially once it's warmed up and, you know, depending on the color, it can tell you certain things about the engine. So first off, if you see white smoke, you know, kind of a thick pillowy white smoke coming from it once it's already warmed up, well that's indicating that coolant is somehow getting inside the combustion chamber. So you could have a cracked cylinder block, you could have a cracked cylinder head, uh, you know, best case maybe it's just a head gasket which is blown, which is still not a good thing. So you really don't want to see white smoke coming from the exhaust indicating that there is coolant getting within the combustion chamber. Uh, you don't know how long that coolant's been in there and it could be causing additional wear. So not a good sign if you see white smoke. Additionally, if you see smoke with kind of a bluish tint to it, this indicates that oil is getting inside the combustion chamber. So this could mean that the piston rings have worn down too much and they're not properly sealing that combustion chamber. It could also indicate that the valve stem seals have too much oil passing by them. Oil is leaking down and getting within the combustion chamber. And finally, you may see a grayish or blackish smoke coming from the exhaust and that would indicate a rich air fuel mixture or incomplete combustion. So if they're flooring it and you see a little bit of black smoke or gray smoke, that's probably fine, that's normal because it's going to have a richer air fuel mixture when you give it full throttle. Uh, but if it's just sitting there idling and you see black smoke from it, or at a lower throttle and you see black smoke or gray smoke coming from it, you do have incomplete combustion occurring and it's just running a bit rich. And a lot of things could be causing this. It could be as simple as a clogged air filter, you may have, you know, uh, the combustion chamber isn't fully sealing. You may have some problems with your intake valves. It could be a result of a spark plug not properly firing. Uh, so there's a host of reasons why you may see black or gray smoke. And ultimately, this is indicating that you have incomplete combustion. Ideally, you don't really want to see much of a color at all coming from the exhaust. Again, if you see some steam when it's cold, no big deal. And another thing that you can do just to see if the engine is perhaps burning oil is just wipe the back bumper and see if you get any black on your glove. And so that would show you, you know, some of the oil that would be burning out, it'll get caught in the turbulence as the car is driving and stick to this bumper. And so if they've recently washed it, then you know, you're not going to be able to see this. So take it on a nice long test drive. And once you're back from the test drive, wipe that back bumper and see if you get any oil on your glove. And that would indicate, you know, that this thing is burning a bit of oil. Now, the number two sign that perhaps you shouldn't buy a used vehicle is if you see oil leaks in the engine bay or other fluid leaks in the engine bay, as well as the overall condition of the engine bay. Now, if you pop the hood and everything is just sparkly clean, well, then that indicates that the user just cleaned it, which is nice, but you may not be able to learn certain things about the engine when it's just freshly clean. So what I would recommend is taking it on a nice long test drive and then park it, then pop the hood and see what you see after that long test drive, see if any leaks have appeared. So the things we're going to be looking for, you're going to want to look around all over the engine block and see, you know, are there engine leaks, are there oil leaks around it, are there, is there coolant pooling uh, anywhere underneath on the belly pan for the engine, anything like that. Look to see if there's any smoke coming from the exhaust manifold. That could tell you that some oil is landing on top of it, which could be leaking out from somewhere. And then again, overall, you just want to look at the condition of the engine bay. So check the hoses, check all the connectors, check the electrical connections, make sure that everything seems to be in good condition. You don't want to see hoses cracking. You don't want to see belts cracking. So check the tension in the belts. Make sure that, you know, they've been maintained, that they've held uh, their position correctly uh, so that, you know, no timing issues could have arrived from a belt slipping or something like that. Another thing that can be helpful is looking up on the hood of the car. So sometimes fluids will spray up onto the hood and that can indicate where a problem might be. So look on the hood of the car and if you see any dark spots on it or certain areas that look like maybe something is spraying on it, check underneath that and see, you know, is there anything going on in that location? 
But again, after that long test drive, just make sure that everything looks like it did before the test drive. And also, you know, check underneath the car, just make sure that nothing is dripping from it. You don't wanna see uh, oil dripping from the engine or coolant dripping from somewhere. So just make sure that all the fluids are well contained within the vehicle. Sign number three is milky or cloudy engine oil. And so you wanna take a look at the engine oil and make sure that it doesn't kinda of look like coffee with cream in it. This would indicate that some coolant has leaked into the engine oil. Now again, if the engine oil has just been changed, this is gonna make it a bit more difficult for you. So that's why it's important to go on that long test drive and then look at the oil again after the test drive and make sure it hasn't changed in appearance and certainly doesn't have any coolant in it. Uh, because if you've got coolant in it, if you notice that it has that milky appearance, then there's likely either you know, a head gasket failure or a crack in the block both of which are not good situations. And if you do have coolant in it, you don't know how long that coolant has been circulating through the engine. And so that engine's not getting proper protection. And as a result, there could be additional engine wear. And it's likely something that's a good idea to stay away from. You also certainly don't want to check the engine oil dipstick and then see thick sludgy oil. You know, that'll indicate that they haven't been keeping up with their oil changes. And another way you may notice this is looking through the oil fill cap. So remove that oil fill cap and have a peek inside, take a flashlight and look around in there and make sure you know that the oil looks clean, that you don't see sludge and deposits built up all in the valve train. That'll let you know that they've been keeping up with their regular oil change intervals and that's super important to know that the engine is in good health. Sign number four is excessive rust. You certainly don't wanna purchase a vehicle that is rusting away. So you can look underneath the vehicle and you absolutely do not need a lift to do this. I've just lifted up this car so that you can see with video better underneath, uh, but you know, you can simply crawl under the car and look at it. You can peek your head under. Another simple trick is just taking your cell phone, uh, you know, start recording a video with the light on and then hold it under the locations, the suspension, under the frame, looking at different areas uh, and then review the video, you know, frame by frame and look for rust underneath the vehicle. So a simple trick, just stick your phone under there. But you wanna look for rust, you know, near the suspension, the suspension components, uh, the frame itself underneath the vehicle. Often you will start to see some exhaust rust. You know, that's not too uncommon to see a little bit of rust on the exhaust, uh, but you certainly don't wanna see anything excessive. You don't wanna see holes in anything. And also this is a great time to start looking for body damage. So you don't wanna see any frame damage or body damage. And you can look around while you're under the car, looking underneath for that kind of thing. Also looking at the panel gaps on the exterior of the vehicle, that can help indicate whether or not this car has been in an accident. If the accident history doesn't show anything, uh, starting to look at, you know, do the panels uh, match in paint? Do the gaps on all the different panels around the vehicle, do those tend to match up and align uh, to indicate whether or not this vehicle has been in a bad accident? Perhaps someone bumped into the side of the garage when they were parking, didn't quite judge it right. Uh, but really you're looking for, you know, some major frame damage here and looking for excessive rust around the suspension underneath the vehicle, making sure it's not gonna fall apart on you the second you drive it away. Now the fifth and final sign that you shouldn't buy a vehicle is if the engine is full of codes. So I use this wireless connector, this is an OBD2 plug, plug it right into the vehicle and then I can scan and see if there are any codes. So you start up the engine, plug in the tool and see what it says. Uh, and for my car, you can see right here that there are zero codes, so that's a good sign. Now, if there aren't any codes, that doesn't mean that the engine is in great shape, but it's certainly a good warning to know if there is something that this does pick up. And you can also go to pretty much any auto parts store and they will scan any car for free. Um, so that's a nice way if you don't have a scanning tool, free, easy way to do it, just go to a parts store and they will let you know what codes there are and what those codes codes may indicate could be wrong with the vehicle. So a huge thank you to Progressive for partnering on this video. I've actually created several other videos with them, so I'll include links to check out those, talking about the science of winter driving, talking about the differences in different tire types, and also talking about simple things that you can check on your car uh, every six months to make sure everything's in good running order. So again, I'll include links to those, and thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.